Hi everyone. The fight against cancer is challenging, but one of the greatest obstacles is cancer's ability to resist treatment. And to combat this, scientists have developed new techniques and new drugs that target specifically the cancer cells. And yet, the cancer resists. It's frustrating. And resistance happens for a variety of reasons. However, one of the major reasons is actually beyond the cancer. And in order to comprehend, we have to take a step back and take a look at its surroundings. The saying goes, no man is an island. We need our communities with our schools, our policemen, our, our hospitals, and water and, and power supplies. And similarly, no cell is an island. They need their communities called tissues, with blood vessels nourishing them, immune cells protecting them, and even structural proteins holding everything in organized manner. Now, like our communities that need architects that gain the permits needed, interact with the councils and the police, and design everything, our cells need their architects. The fibroblasts. Now, the fibroblasts do a lot, of, a lot of work within our tissue. They promote the formation of new blood vessels to nourish our cells. They produce growth factors to enable the cells to survive. They also work to create structural proteins, keeping everything organized, and even interact with immune, the immune cells whenever needed so that we are safe. Now, interestingly, cancer cells are no different. They need supportive communities to thrive. However, they do not have an architect. So the villains they are, they hijack the cells that we once thought to be bystanders, our own fibroblasts, and they make them do their evil bidding. They produce excessive structural proteins, making the tissues very stiff, shielding them from the treatment. They produce new blood vessels, giving them nourishment. They inhibit the immune cells so that they cannot be targeted. And all this happens in extremely toxic environments so that the fibroblasts actually behave as if they are in a wound that never heals. This results into chaotic slums of architecture, in contra contrast to the lovely posh neighborhoods that the fibroblasts are capable of doing. That stiff tissues actually compress the blood vessels, preventing treatment from reaching the cancer. The new blood vessels formed are so immature that they don't even reach the core of the cancer, and so the cells sitting there are immune. And we reach a milestone here, that we know now that we no longer need to just target the cancer cells, but we should also tackle the protective and supportive environment they live in. There are many techniques that are actually proposed on how to do this, but the most applicable and coming soon to the clinic is to block the different activities of the fibroblasts. To do this, we give chemotherapy to attack the cancer, while we use immunotherapy to block those functions, preventing it from forming new blood vessels. However, each cancer manipulates the fibroblasts in a different manner. So we need different combinations fine-tuned to each cancer. And this is where the challenge lies. Now, behind every great structure is a great architect. And with more research in the tumor microenvironment, we'll be able to, we will be able to protect our best and brightest so that they work for us, not against us. Thank you. Well, Namu, thank you very much for your talk. That was a great end for a, a great show today. And my first question, or what my question is about the last thing you were speaking about in your talk, is well, well cancer is not just one disease, but many different diseases, it's, it's, it's many different ways. And what is this uh, immune therapy? How do, they, how do you manage uh, uh, these differences? I would like to hear more about that. Right. So there are a lot of trials ongoing. What we are sure of and we know that every cancer is different. And I'm not just saying that two people with prostate or lung cancer are the same. There are actually intervariations between individuals depending on the genetic code. So at the moment, science is moving and, and the medical treatment is moving towards more personalized precision medicine so that we can look and to each person's cancer and we can actually do an analysis of it and see where the mutations are. So, for example, if we're going to use immunotherapy that targets the formation of new blood vessels, we actually have to do a test to make sure that this therapy is going to be useful. Now, the tests are ongoing on clinical trials that are done, and this is how they get FDA approved and get into the protocols for treatment. So we know that this specific treatment is effective in that type of cancer if that mutation exists out the, or that subcondition. So it's a lot of if statements, and if they work, we can use that treatment. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Okay, I have a question, Mahmoud, and fantastic, and I, I love the outfit, and I love you just stood there and you just bold. It's, it's, it's great, and charisma was perfect. Um, so everybody uh, is aware of cancer, um, but I'm curious, when you talk to your family, say your mother, your father, your grandparents, or maybe even your little brother or sister, how do you describe your research to them? All right, so my research, actually, uh, during my master's degree, I was researching a process known as replication stress. So in order to answer your question, I'm going to go through the simple terms of how I actually go do this. And what I, what I work is I look during the replication process of the DNA in cancer, if there, are, if there is an obstacle or damage to the DNA, this is going to slow down the replication process, which gives us a perfect chance to target the DNA and create more damage so the cell dies. So this is what I was actually researching in how to utilize a weakness within the cancer in order to use it for our own benefit. Thank you, great. Hi Mahmoud, thank you so much um, for your presentation, really fascinating topic. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the time scales? You know, how, how many years in the future do you see these types of treatments being rolled out to patients? Um, definitely. So uh, at the moment when we are speaking of combination treatments to target the microenvironment, so at last year actually one of the treatments was approved for a type of cancer called mesothelioma that happens in the pleura or the lining that covers the lung. Uh, there are actually more to come because uh, there are about over 10 different trials ongoing in different phases. So we should be expecting to see results within the next uh, two to maybe four years. And the good thing about most of these trials is that they use combination of existing drugs. So we're not waiting for something novel that hasn't come out yet. There are actually different approaches uh, and new novel drugs that are being suggested, but they are still in the lab phase. But luckily, we are not dependent on them. We are you working with the clinical trials on the, with, on the drugs that are still currently available in the market. Thank you so much. That's very promising to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.